All righty. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live all across the internet. We should be live right now on Twitch, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. And just to check to make sure that that is the case, if you folks can go ahead, oh my goodness, if you can go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the chat, that would be greatly appreciated appreciated as it were. So just let me know if I'm coming through to you all. And with that, just wanted to welcome everybody to the back deck of the aquarium where we are looking at an almost king tide. Now we do this every year. You folks may know that the king tides happen every single year. They're not really, a, there's not like a scientific definition of what a king tide is, other than they are the largest tidal swings of the year, where we're going to have the biggest high tides and the lowest low tides, the highest highs, the lowest lows, as I'm sure many of you have experienced in the last few years. And what we're looking at right now is the great tide pool here off the back deck of the aquarium that is currently an extension of the Monterey Bay. You might know that the Monterey Bay Aquarium here, for those of you unfamiliar, we're located along the central coast of California, about two hours south from the Bay Area, just an hour south across the Bay from Santa Cruz. And right now, we are an extension of the physical Monterey Bay with a 6.7 foot high tide above the mean tide level. In our area, the tides tend to go about eight feet in their swings at the most. But right now, we are going to be experiencing almost a seven foot high and a one and a half foot low uh, throughout this weekend. So this isn't even the highest tide. Tomorrow, around the same time, we will be seeing a 6.9 foot high tide and a negative one point something, one point, let me see, negative 1.6, negative 1.7, both Saturday and Sunday. Today, we will be showing you the 6.7 foot high tide that is occurring in just about two minutes here at 8.38 a.m. Pacific time. And this afternoon we'll go live again and show you what that low tide will look like here off of the back deck as the ocean retreats. Uh, and that's the, just a quick little introduction, giving folks some time to tune in. Hello everybody that's joining us over there on YouTube. Good morning to Carolyn, Chrissy, Ryburn. Ooh, Fish Biscuit is here, Carolyn. Connie, hello from North Carolina. Awesome. So good to see you folks here tuning in. Hello over there on Twitch to all you folks over there from Louisiana. Hello, penguins. Uh, moved to Utah a few years ago. Definitely miss being close to the ocean. Well, the ocean is waving at you today, especially with this extra high tide that we have going on right now. So hello to everybody that's tuning in over there. And last not least, got to check over here on Facebook. Oh, we've got a lot of folks over here tuning in on Facebook. Thanks so much for being there. Good morning, everybody. Oh, goodness. Lots of folks that are here tuning in over there on Facebook. Thanks for being here. Hello from Florida, New Mexico, Vallejo, Ohio, Cleveland, Michigan, Sanibel Island, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Wonderful. Thanks so much for being here. So, maybe a little bit about the tides. We talk about this every year, but one of the things that is often difficult to understand in terms of how the celestial bodies are dancing around the planet because we are anchored here to the ground, our perception of things can be a little bit difficult to, to reconcile with what the reality is. And so the tides that you're looking at here we know them as things that go up and down throughout the day, but in reality what's going on, very similar to how we talk about a sunset and a sunrise when it's really the planet that is spinning. Well, the spinning of the planet, the spinning of the earth, makes it so that we experience the phenomenon of the tides. The tides are largely linked, mostly linked, to the gravity of the moon. So if you've ever looked up at the moon, our little friend up there, our little satellite, pulls on the ocean with its gravity. So the ocean has a bulge that is pointing towards the moon, where it's extended out towards the moon and then has a 
similar bulge on the opposite side of the planet. And when the moon is pulling on that direction, the strongest tides are happening at new moons and full moons. And so we have a new moon that's coming up here. Then what also happens is the sun, though it's very, very far away, has a huge gravitational influence. Obviously, we are orbiting around it right now. Uh, but it also pulls on the ocean. So there are lunar tides and solar tides. And basically that bulge being of the ocean being pulled out into space towards the mass of the moon and the sun, that is gonna create your high tide. And at right angles to that pole, you're gonna have the low tides um, effectively. So when you have the sun and the moon pulling in the same direction, you have what's known as a spring tide, where things are pulling in the same direction. And when the moon, the sun, and the earth are aligned, that's known as a syzygy. And I'm gonna give folks points in the chat if you can spell syzygy <laughs> without looking it up. That's definitely bonus points watching a king tide stream. But so when the earth and the moon and the sun are all aligned, then you get the spring tides. Then you have once a month, so, I should, I should add one more thing. So you might know that the moon is orbiting the planet pretty much every month, right? Every 29 days, give or take. So hence we have our months. We have the moon orbiting the earth in that amount of time. But then the earth obviously spins around on itself once a day. So you have the moon moving relatively slowly compared to the earth pulling on the tide. And then the earth is spinning through that wave. We're spinning through that tide. So right now, we have spun into this high tide that we're looking at here with the water flowing over the top of our great tide pool and lapping at the aquarium's back deck. And in about six hours, we will have spun out of this high tide bulge and then we will have the extremely low tide on the opposite end. Then something that happens this time of year is this is when we are going to be the closest to the sun in our orbit of the sun, which is known as perihelion. So in our orbit of the sun, it's not a perfect circle. We're gonna be closest to the sun pretty much January 4th every year. And then the moon is gonna be the closest to the earth in that time frame. Whoa, we got a big wave rolling through. Nice. And then the moon is gonna be the closest that it is to earth in its orbit coinciding with this time frame of closest proximity to the sun, closest proximity of the moon to earth, with the moon, the sun, and earth all aligned, therefore pulling on the ocean, stretching it out extra far. And that's how the tide works. We've got a few guesses of Syzygy. Oh my goodness, we've got Kathy Brown with the win. As far as I can see over there on Facebook, Kathy, you got Syzygy, right? Penguins are hot over on Twitch. Nailed it first try. Syzygy. Nice. Proud of you, everybody. Hello, Gus from the UK. Oh, can't spell it off of the American accent. Well, in California, we spell it Syzygy. But great job, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. So that is when you have the alignment of those celestial bodies. We'll spell it S-E-A, celestial bodies because we are the aquarium after all. And so that's how we get the king tides. So they're not a specific, there's not a specific definition other than they are the highest highs, the lowest lows of the year. They're predictable. They happen every year around this time of year, December and January. And one of the things that we like to point out here for those of you folks that might be visiting the coastline is that there is a project going on, the California King Tides project and if you were to use hashtag king tides wherever you happen to go hashtag king tides along the coast and document the high tide that is happening tomorrow let's see for those of you who might be along the coast that high tide is happening tomorrow saturday at 9 19 in the morning and then again on sunday at 10 4 a.m if you want those highest highs and if you document anything like roads flooding, big waves crashing over sidewalks, things of that nature, those are really important 
bits of documentation for legislators, scientists, lots of different nonprofits that are working to help mitigate sea level rise and the impacts of climate change along our coastline. Because here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, we are very concerned about sea level rise because as you can see, sometimes of the year we are a physical extension of the Monterey Bay. And the thing to think about is imagine if this high tide right here is your normal, typical, everyday high tide, where it's maybe one to two feet above what normal high tides are. The way that we've built our roads, we've built our buildings, we've structured our communities around the sea level rise or the sea level that is pretty much stable over a long period of time. And now we have a situation with the heating of the planet. You might know that from human activity, we have a lot of extra heat energy in our atmosphere. That heat energy is going largely into the ocean and the thermal expansion of water, you might know that if you boil water, it's gonna take up a little bit more volume. Well, if you heat up the ocean at scale, considering how large the ocean is, just a slight little bit of increase, a few centimeters, a few millimeters here and there, you start adding it up over time and that sea level rises very dramatically. Because as you can see here, all you need is just an extra foot or so to make this back deck a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more difficult to run our underwater explorer programs out here. So the thing to think about when you're looking at a view like this of this extremely high tide is imagine if this was the normal high tide and then the king tides were a foot or two above this and then imagine that there's a storm, it's windy, there's big waves and the kind of effect it can have on buildings like ours here at the aquarium or on low-lying roads and other areas, wetlands, sloughs, which we have plent plentily here along the coast. But in particular, imagine if for those of you who have been to Monterey, consider that the tunnel coming into Monterey is below sea level. And consider that Lake El Estero is also right at sea level when you're driving into the area. Imagine that road flooding a couple times a year in the winter. That's the type of thing we're looking at with sea level rise. And so one of the things with the king tides we always wanna mention is that looking at a king tide, looking at these kind of high tides, these are the typical average ho-hum high tides of tomorrow with climate change, the thermal expansion of the ocean, and also the addition of extra water volume to the ocean, though that's less of the effect currently, as I understand it. There we have that nice big wave rolling on through there. So if you happen to come on down to the coast this weekend, and you take a photo of those high tides, make sure to either tag them, hashtag King Tides, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, wherever you happen to be uploading your photos, you can also head over to the California King Tides Project website and upload it there. And let me make sure I have that website. Yep, it would be coastal.ca.gov if you want to learn more about the King Tides Project over there. Oh, and I almost forgot for all of you folks here that are watching. Let me see, I'll show you right now a quick photo of what the back deck looks like at low tide, what we'll be seeing a little bit later. So up on your screen now, you should see more or less the view, there we go, of what the low tide will look like just a little bit later on today. So there's the rocky reef off the back deck filled with intertidal animals. And these king tides are really the ones that push intertidal animals through some of the largest extremes that they experience throughout the year. We've done a few different intertidal walks and talks here at the aquarium in the past. We always talk about how intertidal animals, the animals that live between these tides that are, um, that are at the mercy of the Earth's rotation through the moon's tug of war with the global ocean, and the animals that live in those tidal zones that are exposed during the king tides, at the lowest tides, they experience air being out of the water just a few hours out of the year, just a few, just a few hours out of the month at most. And then on the opposite end, you have animals that live in the very high intertidal that are effectively still land animals and less uh, aquatic animals. Those animals are then exposed to being underwater for an extended period of time, which, which can also cause its problems, and especially 
they start being hit by waves, they start being hit by sand. Um, and then on the opposite ends, the animals in the low intertidal being exposed to air, to sunlight, to the waves crashing on them as well. So it's a very extreme time for those animals there. And we always like to point out that those intertidal animals are some of the most extreme animals on the planet living between the two worlds that we have here on Earth, the land side, and the ocean side of things. So, with that, the high tide came and went officially just about 13, 11 minutes ago, excuse me. So, uh, sorry to disappoint, this is no longer the highest tide. <laughs> of the day, but tomorrow at 9 a.m., give or take, and then at 10 a.m. on Sunday, you will be seeing even higher tides here. So again, we are here off the back deck of the aquarium showing you this high tide because this is a glimpse into the future of our coastline as our seas warm, as the ocean expands, and as the ocean then takes up the room that's available, which is back there on land, and in this case, our great tide pool here off the back deck of the aquarium. And it's another reminder for those of you out there interested in participating of taking your photos, tagging them, hashtag King Tides, or uploading them to the California King Tides Project website so that you can help scientists, legislators, coastal planners, city managers see what the future looks like with the King Tides, the highest tides, becoming average pedestrian tides of the future. Okay, with that, I can answer a few of your questions before signing off, if you'd like, over there on Facebook. We've got the question. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Elena Timberlake, for putting that in the chat. Let me just pin that for everybody. Thank you. Uh, it looks chilly, the temperature right now, somewhere in the 50s. The water is in the 50s right now. And... I think that covers pretty much all the questions. Yeah, so Syzygy was S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y, for those of you who were trying to guess. And with that, everybody, we are going to sign off here. Let me, oh, sorry, I forgot to check over there on YouTube. Do the fish in the main aquarium react to the high tide if it's in contact with the rear concrete wall? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, we don't have, as far as I can see here, too many exhibits that would have a direct connection. We are standing over the ocean where I'm standing right now, um, but the water doesn't really hit the underside of that. Um, but what does happen when we have the big winter waves is the waves do break along our, along our walls here and uh, usually get the visitors wet a little bit. So that can be pretty fun. Um, has Monterey Bay experienced ocean temperature rise or pH changes? Uh, yes, I'm less familiar with the pH changes. We monitor that at our intake pipes, which are, if I turn the camera, out that way. Basically, our intake pipes are right over there. But we do monitor the pH coming in and out. The ocean is getting more acidic over time from reactions of carbon dioxide in the water. Basically the ocean is, for those of you who are in chemistry, and if I remember correctly, the ocean is one giant buffered system uh, where there are a lot of different building blocks in there for various um, substances to interact with, to react with. But when carbon goes into the ocean, it ends up uh, carbon dioxide reacts with water and carbonate in the water to create carbonic acid and it will basically use up building blocks. The carbon that we have in the atmosphere uses up building blocks for other organisms like small snails or other shell building organisms. Those run out of Legos to build their shells with because the carbon is um, competing with them for that. And so over time, as, uh, as carbonic acid is created, it makes the ocean slightly more acidic, which then can cause a lot of problems for those for those animals building their shells, as I mentioned. So we do monitor that. But the temperature has risen steadily. There's a research program going on next to our Hopkins Marine Station at Stanford that's been studying the organisms in the intertidal here for over 100 years. And we've seen a very steady northward march of animals that are used to colder, 
temperatures. They've moved north up to Oregon, Washington, etc. And we've had a steady, in, um, a steady increase in animals coming from Southern Californian waters, more warmer waters that are now more commonplace in tide pools. So 100 years ago, certain animals would only show up during the highest temperature times. Now they live here all the time. And that's why when you hear about things like polar bears and other animals that are adapted to very specific circumstances at the poles, those are the animals that have nowhere to go because there's nowhere north or south for them to go from the poles for them to find their same, their same adapted circumstances. So that's why you tend to hear a lot about animals living in extreme environments. They get squeezed a lot harder than animals that have a larger repertoire of ranges, of temperature ranges for them to live in. But they're all affected similarly because if one food is affected, then animals that might be fine in the temperature range, if they can't find their food, then that causes all these issues. Hence, why the aquarium's mission here is to inspire conservation of the ocean in particular, to help move away from a lot of the known destruction that we can cause with our industries to the natural environment, and especially knowing that the ocean has already buffered humanity against a lot of the worst excesses of climate change already. But as we can see with these king tides, with the high tides, you don't want to sleep on the ocean and what it's doing because if the ocean changes, it affects the entirety of the planet and more to the point, uh, might affect whether or not we have to offer snorkel tours at the aquarium in the future. So with that, everybody, I want to say thank you for your support of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thank you for following us here on social media. If you enjoyed this presentation, we will be able... Oh yeah, uh, we've got a few folks that are wondering, yes, all of these broadcasts will be available right after we're done. So once I'm done here and I hit stop, then Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and Twitter will process this video and it'll be available as a post on our feed throughout the rest of the day. So you'll be able to watch what happened today. You can head over to our YouTube channel and uh, see if I contradicted myself from the last few years. <laughs> Uh, doing these streams off the back deck. Uh, but yeah, we will see you all uh, if you're still around, if you're interested, later this afternoon, sometime around 3 o'clock. 3 p.m., let me see what time are we streaming. Sometime around uh, 4 p.m., maybe 3.45 this afternoon, we'll show you the low tide of what it looks like out here off the back deck during these king tides. Um, with that, everybody, thank you so much. Oh, quick shout out for the folks out there who might be tuning in. Quick shout out to IRL Backpacks, who have helped support us with uh, a neat little streaming kit so I can move around off the back deck and stream to you in high quality here. So shout out to IRL Backpacks there for the help. And with that, everybody, we will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day, wherever you have to be around the world. Thanks, everybody.